Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. So I was snooping around the internet a few days ago and I happened to have come across a freshly squeezed article from Japan's Seiyuu Premium Magazine. Which is a magazine or book that interviews all sorts of different Seiyus or Japanese voice actors. And in the latest edition of Seiyuu Premium, they interview the legendary Hayashibara Megumi. Who, if you guys don't know, is known for her timeless performances as the voices of Rei from Evangelion, the female Dama from Dama Half, and the original Jessie from the Pokemon series. Now besides the characters that she voiced, the the other reason why Hayashibara Megumi is known highly in the anime voice acting community is because she was one of the first anime voice actors to also make it independently as an entertainer. Back in the 90s when Hayashibara Megumi first entered the seiyuu industry, there was a large demand for female voice actors. And while being quite a large name in her seiyuu role, she also became famous for being a singer and actually even entered the Oricon Japan charts. Now while the idea of seiyus becoming singers or entertainers outside of their CEO role isn't the most groundbreaking piece of news today. It was, certainly was a very new concept back in the 90s and Hayashibara Megumi was one of the fundamentals of these Seiyus becoming known as entertainers and singers and actors and pretty much being famous outside of their role as a Seiyu. Bless you Hayashibara, your, your, your voice gives me bonus for weeks. However, in this latest Seiyu Premium interview that she was involved in, she expressed her thoughts on the very industry that brought her up. She questioned the state of voice actors becoming more than the characters that they are cast in by saying, quote, If they put their faces out there as grab your idols, what happens to the gap between them and their characters? She also argues that the border between voice actress and character kind of disappears with fans wanting to see the aesthetically cute faces of their favorite voice actresses. And that the lifespan of a modern seiyuu is getting shorter and shorter than ever before. With the emergence of fresher talents and fresher voices coming into the spotlight every year. She was also a little bit disappointed with the state of the modern voice acting industry as a whole. With managers and producers seemingly feeling no responsibility in taking care of their voice actresses and talents and kind of just letting them defend for themselves in this rapidly recycling industry which Hayashibata describes as quote you're made to feel like an indisposable person but in three years time that position might change so with that information dump out of the way I want to get to the opinion piece of this piece of news and express my thoughts and my concerns based on what Hayashibata states in this interview and I also kind of want to express my personal opinions on these problems within the modern anime voice acting industry that Hayashibata describes so first and foremost, I just want to say one thing to Miss Hayashibara in saying Welcome to the modern entertainment industry girl. Sadly this change that Hayashibara is seeing in the modern voice acting industry is not just prevalent in the seiyuu industry, but pretty much every entertainment industry that is still thriving today. The film industry, the music industry, the television industry, help the YouTube industry, the platform that you are watching this video on right now, is stuck in this short-minded mindset. Back in the 90s and decades before that, the people in these industries always asked themselves one question. How can we keep this talent that we have making money for us for as long as possible. However, since then, the question has changed to this. How can we milk this talent out as much as possible in the shortest amount of time? To put it simply, think of the industry as a farmer looking after a cow. Back in the 90s and decades before that, the farmer loved this one cow that he had. He fed her properly, he groomed it, he looked after it, he treated it like a B.I. fucking P. And in return, the cow would give the farmer delicious milk every day. And when I say delicious, I mean delicious. Like this is like milk that makes the farmer jizz his pants the moment it touches his tongue. And even as time went on and the cow got a little bit older and produced less milk than before, the farmer would still look after to this cow because to the farmer this cow was a one-of-a-kind cow. It was so difficult for the farmer to come across a cow that was just as good as this one and killing it or disposing of it would jeopardize the farmer's life. But then as time went on and we entered the 21st century, the farmer realized one thing. It's that these supposed one-of-a-kind cows were becoming so much more common that they were becoming almost indistinguishable. So what does the farmer do? Well, he buys a bunch of these cows and milks the shit out of them. And when the cows started to produce less milk than expected, does the farmer look after the cow and take care of it until it does die? No, he would just dispose of it and go out and replace it with a fresher, more one-of-a-kind cow. And now you know why it's called milking the cash cow. Boy, no! So hopefully you guys understood from that 
rather strange story, the current state of the entertainment industry. It's all about fast-paced, short-lived, large-producing cardboard cutouts to satisfy the simple-minded, short attention spans of the consumers. And much like every other industry, the seiyuu industry that Hayashibara is seeing is just falling into that same loop. And I think there is really only one thing to blame for this change. The lack of originality. Back in the 90s, the anime industry was just coming out of its niche and more experimental stage. While there were less anime being produced, the quality of anime and the time and energy spent on a single series was a lot higher than today's standards, with it having unique and interesting stories and characters that the audiences at the time had never even seen in their lives, and it was just standards. But as the anime boom really kicked in the 90s, more and more shows were being produced and with it, more and more demand for more and more voice actors or seiyus were being called for. Nowadays the anime industry is producing more and more series than ever before with the expanding and rapidly growing demand for more and more series from a growing consumer base. And with it comes the problem of trying to stay original and unique within the large crowd. Just to put it in a simple comparison, in 1994, which was the year that I was born, a grand total of 20 anime series were created. Do you know how many anime series were created last year in 2015? Have a guess, I'll, g I'll give you a second. 136. Jesus fucking Christ, no wonder I don't have any time to watch all the anime anymore. And mind you, that's not including anime movies. All I'm gonna say is I think it's pretty fucking difficult to produce over 100 series in 365 days and also try to be original with every single one of those series. Not to mention that modern anime series not only have to deal with anime series that were created in the same year or the same decade, but also have to be compared to series back in the 90s and 80s and 70s. Most of which actually built the foundations and standards of modern anime, as well as every cliche and trope that you can think of in any anime series. And much like the overpopulation of anime series, there is also the natural overpopulation of anime voice actors working on those hundreds and hundreds of series. I just found it really funny how at the end of the interview, Hayashibata mentioned the problems with modern anime being that there was a serious lack of originality and that she really didn't like the fact that modern anime and modern anime characters were being described as being like blank. I just found that coincidental and kind of hilarious considering that Hayashibara is best known for her voice as Ayana Mide from Neon Genesis Evangelion and how I even made a video on how Ayana Mide is one of the most copied characters in all of anime. And that's the nature of it all, it's a quantity over quality world now. I mean, no matter how cardboard cut out or how unoriginal it is, if it makes you that little bit of dough for a few weeks, then it's worth throwing out into the world as a test dummy. It's literally a short term trial and error period. And unfortunately, I've been seeing YouTube as slowly starting to become like that as well. There are more and more channels appearing on YouTube that I have seen with the mindset of the more I produce in a shorter amount of time, the more I'll be able to survive on YouTube without even giving a glimpse of thought on things like quality or originality. But as much as I am against that, I honestly don't blame them. Every year, every month even, it's becoming harder and harder to find quote unquote original content on YouTube. Because much like the anime industry, the anime voice acting industry, the film industry, music industry, television industry, everything's already been done. And the fast paced growth of the internet culture and how things spread across the internet and all across the world, it's becoming so much harder for producers and creators to come up with something that people have never seen before. Because you know what they say, once you've seen the internet, You've seen it all. And the saddest thing about all of this is that no matter how much me or you or Hayashibara Megumi complain about the whole rapid cycle of every industry out there, there's nothing we can do about it. If you're willing and planning to put yourself into that industry and be one of the many cogs that runs the industry machine, you just gotta accept the fact that that's just how the machine works now. Because whether you like it or not, once you start to rust even a little bit, you're just going to be replaced by a cog that's better and fresher than you. They call it keeping it fresh, I just call it recycling. If they can replace you with something similar or better, 
then that's just how the machine's gonna roll. This video kind of turned out a lot more serious than I intended it to be, but guys, let me know in the comments below, what do you think about the problems that Hayashi Bada Megumi sees in the anime voice acting industry, the anime industry, or pretty much just the entire entertainment industry of today? Also, can you think up of any possible solutions to this short-minded mindset of these industries and how we can possibly change the industry to make it both better for the industry but also better for the people who put themselves into that industry and hey just a quick message to every single person who wants to put themselves into that industry regardless of if it's the anime industry film industry tv industry the youtube industry right here as a person who is technically a cog in the youtube machine there are really two ways that you can play the game you can either let the machine take you over or you can work with the machine. And by that, I mean, you know, do the things that you still want to do, but don't forget to also work with the machine as well. Don't be completely against the machine because that's when you start to have a bad time. As much as Hayashi Bada Megumi found all the negatives within all of this, we really need to also find the positives within all of this as well because it's not all bad news. I mean, hey, at the end of the day, if you enjoy anime voice acting, if you enjoy, you know, being an actor, if you enjoy being a musician, if you enjoy being a YouTuber, then you know what? Everyone wins. As long as you're happy and the industry's happy, everybody's happy. Unfortunately, life is fucking unfair, but you gotta find the positives in that unfair life, you know what I'm saying? Sorry for ending the video so sappy, I really didn't mean to tender like that, but anyways guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe!